in uh, Philippians chapter 4, 12 to 13, Apostle Paul is making a very powerful, a very powerful statement of declaration addressing his current situation. All of us at some point in life we get into situations that needs fixing. You know, situations that needs intervention. But this is how Apostle Paul addressed his situation because there is always a way out. There is always a way out out of any situations of life. But Apostle Paul solved, solved his situation by something he knew that he is inviting us to know. Praise the name of the living God. Apostle Paul is saying there is a certain knowledge that will keep you afloat in your worst times as much as it will make you grow in your good times. In Philippians chapter uh, 4, uh, verses 12 to 13, I want us to read from both the Message Bible and the Amplified Bible so we see the seriousness of this very powerful declaration Apostle Paul is making and see what we can learn, especially uh, in our recent times. Praise the name of the living God. Now, he says this, I'm just happy. I'm just happy with little as with much. With much as with little. He's saying, I'm happy with little as with much. I'm happy with much as with little. He's saying, to me, there is no difference between having much and having little. He's saying there is no difference between having and not having. He says, I have learned to manage with or without. You can imagine when you get to a place where you are able to manage with or without. Where you are able to thrive with much or with less. And Apostle Paul is telling us, I am happy. I am just happy. It doesn't matter what I have or what I don't have. It does not define who I am. I am not who I am because of what I have or what I do not have. I have learned to be who I am in spite of what I have or what I do not have. So he says, I have found the recipe. And this is what Apostle Paul is inviting us to do. He says, I have found a recipe for being happy. Listen, there is a formula for being happy. Happiness is, 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 is a choice. It's not, it's not something circumstantial. It doesn't just happen. No, you cannot just be happy with or without. There is a formula. There is something you need to know to elevate you to a place where it doesn't matter what you have or what you do not have. He says, I have found the recipe for being happy, whether full or hungry. Uh, hungry, Hands full or hands empty. So when I'm, I'm hands full or when I'm hands empty, the difference is the same. Praise the name of the living God. Verse 13, it says, whatever I have, whenever I have. Oh, I like that. It says, whatever I have, wherever I am, I can make it. He's saying, listen, I can make it. It doesn't matter where I am. It doesn't matter what I have. I can make it. I have the formula of succeeding no matter where I am, no matter what I have, or no matter what I do not have. So it doesn't matter what I have or what I do not have. I am destined to succeed. My success is not best uh, or is not founded on what I have or what I do not have. What I have is the recipe to be happy, the recipe to succeed with or without. He says, I can make it through anything. Let me ask you, can you make it through anything? Can you make it through anything? There are people who cannot make it. Even in mild situations, even in situations that don't appear to be very serious. There are people who just won't make it because they have not discovered, they have not found the recipe to make it with or without. They have not found the recipe to make it wherever they are. It doesn't matter where they are. You place them anywhere, they succeed. You 
check them, I don't know where, they just do well because they have discovered or they have found the recipe that makes them succeed or thrive at any time, regardless to where they are. Praise the name of the living God. So he says, whatever I have, where, where, wherever I am, I can make it through anything. And then look at it, it says, I can make it through anything in the one who makes me who I am. So Apostle Paul is telling us the key is getting to know who you are. The key is the one who makes you who you are. Praise the name of the living God. Verses 14 says, I don't mean that your help didn't mean a lot to me. It did. It was a beautiful thing that you came alongside me in my troubles, right? He says, in my troubles. Now let's look at um, Amplified. The same, same text. Uh, it says this, Amplified. I know how to be a best and live humbly in strained circumstances. I know also how to enjoy plenty and live in abundance. He says, I have learned in any and all circumstances the secret of facing every situation. There is a secret. Listen, there is a recipe to facing every situation and emerge victorious. And that's why I said it is a choice. It's a, it's a choice consciousness. He says, I know the secret of facing every situation, whether well-fed or going hungry. Having, listen, look at it. Having a sufficiency and enough to spare. Going without and being in want. Then verse 13 says, I have the strength for all things. I have the strength to go through anything. I have the strength to succeed anywhere. I have the strength to become anything, anytime. Praise the name of the living God. And he says, this is where the strength comes from. He says, I have the strength for all things in Christ who, he says, in Christ who empowers me. He says, I am ready. In Christ, he says, I am ready for anything equal to anything through him who infuses my inner strength into me. Lastly, he says, I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. Apostle Paul is saying, I am self-sufficient. Now, this is what Apostle Paul is saying concerning you and concerning me and concerning us. And this is what Apostle Paul is inviting us to do. You remember in John chapter 6, verses 6, when Jesus had just finished preaching to multitudes and, uh, and the disciples had asked him to send the crowds away because it was late in the evening. Jesus insisted that uh, Jesus insisted that they find something to give to the people because the people had spent the whole day with him and they were hungry. The Bible says Jesus turned to Philip and tell Philip, give these people something to eat. Give them something to eat. But the Bible says Jesus was saying this to stretch Philip's faith. He was saying this to test Philip, because Jesus already knew what he was going to do. And that's exactly what Apostle Paul is saying. He say, I know how to live without. I know how to live in seasons of scarcity. I know how to live in seasons of famine and drought. He says, I can succeed anytime, anywhere, because there is something I know. There is something I know. The same, same thing. Jesus says, I know what I'll do. Jesus knew what he was going to do. And Apostle Paul, he says, there is a place in Christ. There is a place in Christ. Listen, several things I want to mention. 
And that's why that is Apostle Paul's invitation in Philippians chapter 3, 12 and 13. There is a place in Christ. There is a place in the knowledge of Christ. There is a place in understanding Christ for who he is, where everything is possible. Praise the name of the living God. There is a place in Christ. There is a place in Christ where Apostle Paul is inviting us. Where everything is possible. In Christ and through Christ, everything is possible. Everything is possible. Don't you ever say that it's not possible. What God has said, it is possible. If Jesus said it is possible, it is possible. Regardless to where you are, regardless to what you're going through, regardless to what is not happening in your life, if he says it is possible, it is possible because he has said it is possible. Apostle Paul is inviting us to a place in Christ where everything is possible. He's saying it is possible to succeed succeed with nothing. It is possible to succeed in difficult times. It is possible to have more than a knife in a season of scarcity. In Genesis chapter 26, in Genesis 26, Isaac was running away from Gera because of it was a season of drought and famine. With God's instruction, in verses 12, Isaac planted in Gera. And the Bible says he harvested a hundredfold. A place where Isaac was anticipating failure. The same, same place where he was anticipating failure. That's why he was running away. With God's instruction, with a certain revelation, Isaac planted in Gera and he harvested one hundredfold. And that's the message of Apostle Paul is saying there is a place in Christ where everything is possible, where it is possible that you are having nothing and yet you can become anything. Praise the name of the living God. That's why he says, I am happy. I have known how to be happy. I have the recipe. I have the formula. I have the secret. I have learned the secret of having it all in all, even when I have nothing at all. Praise the name of the living God. Apostle Paul is inviting us in a place in Christ where everything is possible. Listen, it is possible even when in your face it looks impossible. Listen, there is nothing like impossible. There is nothing like impossible. You can become anything and everything you desire to become or dream to become as long as you come in this place in Christ where all things are possible. Praise the name of the living God. But number two, Apostle Paul is inviting us in a place in Christ where everything you need is provided for. Where everything you need is provided for. Listen, you cannot be in Christ and be characterized you cannot be in Christ and live a life characterized by lack and nothingness. Apostle Paul says, actually in Philippians chapter 419, that my God shall supply to every of your needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. There is a place in Christ where everything that you need is being provided for. First, Second Peter, chapter one. Let's read. Second Peter, one. One three. This is what the Bible says. I'm reading it from the Amplified version. It says, "For His divine power has bestowed upon us all things, all things that are requisite and suited to life and godliness, through the full and personal knowledge of Him who called us." By and to his own glory and excellence. Praise God. He's saying through his divine power, everything that we need for life and godliness has already been provided for. 
Listen, everything that we need that is requisite for our living, that is suited for our life, has already been provided for us. However, he says, it is only possible to them that have this knowledge. There is a certain knowledge that makes sure that you have it all at all time, no matter where you are or no matter what you're going through. That's what I'm saying. He's saying, listen, it is not possible that you are in Christ and you're living a life characterized with lack and nothing less. Let me read the same from Message Bible, right? Message says this. Everything that goes into life of pleasing God has been miraculously given not will be miraculously given, has been miraculously given to us by getting to know. He says, he says the key is by getting to know. There is something you need to know, like Jesus knew what he was going to do. Apostle Paul knew what he was going to do at all time, at every given time, because he had learned that the secret to remain afloat in good times and in worse times, in times of scarcity, in times of plenty, in seasons of drought and famine, he says the secret is knowing. There is certain knowledge that will keep you afloat. My people perish for lack of knowledge, the knowledge of who Christ is. You know, Jesus asked the disciples, who do people say I am? Who do people say I am? Jesus wanted to know if they know who he is. Who do people say I am? They say some said you are uh, uh, Elijah, uh, uh, others one of the prophets. And then he turns to them and asks them, who do you say I am? Apost uh, Peter uh, uh, raised up and, and say, you are Christ. You are Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus says, hey, listen, Peter, this has not been revealed to you by blood and flesh. Listen. Now, Peter knows something everybody else does not know. He said, because you have known this, you will become this. It is the knowledge of who he is that makes us become who we are in him. Praise God. And he said, upon this rock, upon this revelation, Peter, I'm going to build a church that cannot be overcome. I'm going to build a church that can go through anything and still succeed. And upon this revelation, upon this revelation, upon this knowledge, upon this knowledge that you have concerning me, I'm going to build a church that will thrive at every time, no matter what seasons, no matter what times, this church will succeed because this church is built and founded on who I am. Praise the name of the living God. He says everything that goes into life for pleasing God has been miraculously given to us by getting to know, by getting to know him personally and intimately. Look at it. He says the one who has invited us to God, that is Jesus. The best invitation we ever received. This is the best invitation we have ever received. The invitation to come to a place where everything is possible. The invitation to come to a place where everything is been provided for. However, through his knowledge. Praise the name of the living God. Number three. Listen. Apostle Paul is inviting us to a place in Christ where, listen, where we are programmed to succeed. He's inviting us in a place in Christ where we are programmed to succeed. Listen. There is a, such a knowledge in Christ that will make you succeed with or without. That will make you great with or without. There is a, such a knowledge. The people that Jesus Christ called were poor people. Were people who were barely making it in life. Those apostles, they were struggling. In fact, there's a time when Jesus, when Jesus uh, found them having toiled the whole night, having hustled the whole night, and they had caught nothing. Praise God. But he invited them. After the invitation in Luke chapter 5, you know what happened. The Bible says they could not because the catch was so great. Men who had failed the previous night succeeded the following day in the morning. They had failed the whole night. They had struggled. They were frustrated because they had catched nothing. 
Praise God. But with his word, when he said, throw the net on the right, and the breakthrough was great. The breakthrough was powerful. They had everything, praise the name of the living. They had to call for people to help because they could not handle the breakthrough by themselves. Praise the name of the living God. And that is a place where he is inviting us, a place where we are wired, where we are programmed to succeed. Listen, there is such a knowledge in Christ that will keep your marriage afloat, will keep your marriage successful. It will keep your career going, praise the name of the living God. Listen, you are being invited in a place in Christ where your program to succeed in your marriage, to succeed in your family, to succeed in your relationship, to succeed in your business, to succeed in your ministry. There is a, such a place in Christ where we are programmed to grow, programmed to be successful. Praise the name of the living God. Listen, I said this. If you are, listen, you can't be in Christ and fail or have a failed career. You can't be in Christ and have the knowledge of who he is and failed in ministry. If you fail, it's because you have chosen to fail, but you cannot be in him, carrying his mind, knowing who he is, and fail. Because in him, you carry the knowledge that enables you know what to do at every given time. Praise the name of the living God. Number five, right? Last but not least, Apostle Paul is inviting us in a place in Christ where everything is perfect, where everything is perfect. Listen, you can't be in Christ and be imperfect. I'll repeat that again. You can't be in Christ and be imperfect because he is perfect. The one who is calling you is perfect. He is calling you into perfection. Titus chapter 1 verses 15, the Bible says, to the perfect, all things are perfect. To the perfect, all things are perfect. To the holy, all things are holy. To the righteous, all things are righteous. But to the imperfect, all things are imperfect. To the unholy, all things are unholy. To the unrighteous, all things are unrighteous. God in Christ is inviting you to a place where you have everything all together. You have perfect, perfect relationships. Praise God. Because he's a perfect God. He's a perfect God. The reason why certain things don't appear perfect is because you have an imperfect consciousness. When you carry an imperfect consciousness, everything is not perfect. There are people who don't think marriage is perfect. There are people who don't think they are perfect marriages because their consciousness is subdued by imperfection. When you have a consciousness that is subdued with imperfection, listen, you will always see imperfection. But if your eyes are Filled with the glory of God. You can only see people as glorious. You can only see things as glorious because your eyes are flooded with gloriousness. If your eyes are flooded with righteousness and perfection and love, you can only see the same. Jesus, Apostle Paul, is inviting us to a place in Christ where everything is perfect. As he is perfect. Praise the name of the living God. Listen. In Christ and through Christ, every situation can be under control. Every situation can be under control. Because as long as you are in Christ, and that's the message he was giving to the people in John chapter 6, as long as I am present, everything is under, under control. And that's why Jesus could afford to sleep in the boat while the men were busy fighting for their lives. They were fighting for their lives. They were fighting for their careers. They are fighting for their families. And yet among them, there was found one who was resting. Why? Because he knows that as long as I am on board, everything is under control. Listen, your situation is only under control. If you have this knowledge in Christ, 
you have this knowledge in Christ that with God, all things are possible. With God and through Christ, everything that we need for life and godliness is being provided for. If you know that in Christ, everything about us is programmed to succeed, and that if you know that in Christ and through Christ, everything is being made perfect. In Christ, you have everything that you need for life and godliness. Everything that you need is provided for in Christ. Everything that you need is provided for in Christ. Invest in knowing him for who he is. Invest in knowing him for what he has done. Invest in knowing him for what he is doing in your life. There are so many great things God is doing in your life that you're not even aware. And as long as you're not aware of the things God is doing in your life, the enemy continues to take advantage of your ignorance to keep you in a place of defeat, to keep you in a place where you feel disadvantaged and overwhelmed or overcome by situations. No situations should overcome you because the one who overcame the whole world lives inside of you. David with one stone, he brought down Goliath because he knew how to do it. He knew how to bring Goliath down. When you know you thrive in seasons of scarcity, and famine, and drought, and lack. When you know how to put situations under control, you can thrive in any season, anytime, anywhere, all the days of your life, and still remain the same person yesterday, today, and forevermore. There are people who cannot be consistent because they do not have the knowledge that keeps people afloat in good times as much as in worse time. And that's my prayer for you today, that you may invest your time to know. Hosea says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. In Romans chapter 10, the Bible says, because they did not know the knowledge of God, they went ahead to establish their own righteousness. They went ahead to establish their own knowledge. And listen, sometimes it is our own knowledge against the knowledge of God that is working against us making it very difficult for us to thrive at all times through all seasons. May God bless you and keep you and watch over you and give you the wisdom and the understanding to scripture in order that you may carry this Godhead in you who is able to help you, strengthen you, and show you how to keep every situation under control. God bless you and keep you in Jesus' name. Amen.